thousands of displaced families returned to their homes in different parts of Lebanon following a 60-day ceasefire between resistance forces and Israel. In Kazakhstan, Russian President Vladimir Putin arrived in Astana as part of an official visit to assess and strengthen bilateral relations and take part in the Collective Security Treaty Organization Summit. And in Peru, the government declared a prison emergency due to overcrowding and the poor state of the prison infrastructure. Hello and welcome to From the South. I'm Alejandra Garcia from Telesur Studios in Havana, Cuba. We begin with the news. Stay with us. Thousands of displaced families return to their homes in different parts of Lebanon and celebrate the victory of the Lebanese resistance after a ceasefire with Israel. The ceasefire is a byproduct of international pressure and the resistance of the Lebanese people. The agreement stipulated a 60-day ceasefire in which progress will be made in the prisoners' swap, while the Lebanese forces will be the only ones allowed to deploy on the southern border. However, Israeli fire is still reported in the south of the country. In all, the Lebanese health ministry registered that 3,823 people have been killed and 15,859 injured since the escalation of the Israeli aggression towards Lebanon since September 2024. This feeling is a victory, a pride and an honor for us, for the Shiite sect and for Lebanon in general. This is a pride and an honor, and we will certainly win, we will certainly win. In this regard, the Lebanese parliament called for the unity of all political forces in the country following the entry into force of the ceasefire from early Wednesday morning. The top government and parliament authorities urged the whole country to remain united and demanded the respect of the United Nations Resolution 1701 based on a ceasefire between Israel and Hezbollah. Prime Minister Nijab Mikati, Najib Mikati affirmed that he is facing a historic national situation and it is a collective responsibility to maintain unity to warranty the security of citizens. The Prime Minister also thanked the Speaker of the Parliament, Nabi Berry, for his cooperation with the defense of the country against Israeli hostilities after months of bombing. The Defense Minister of Lebanon, Maurice Slim, asserted on Wednesday that its army will move towards the southern border as long as Israeli forces keep their withdrawal from his nation. The army in the south will redeploy further as long as the Israeli enemy forces move out of the areas they are already present, keeping their retreat behind the international border. Concurrently, the Lebanese minister underscored that the national armed forces will ensure the safe return of displaced families to their homes. In addition, the army will further accompany the citizens entering the areas, and it will work on warning them of areas that still pose danger due to shellings or other kinds of aggressions. The army will do the technical work to alert them and guide them to the places they can return to. All this counting on the absence of the enemy on the territory as they are retreating. The Chinese foreign minister supported the ceasefire agreement between Israel and Lebanon, however, warned that Israeli aggression in the Gaza Strip continues to destabilize the region. China is paying close attention to the current situation in Lebanon and Israel and has consistently been calling on all parties to strictly abide by UN Security Council Resolution 1701. We support all efforts conducive to easing tensions and achieving peace and welcome the agreement reached by relevant parties on a ceasefire. At the same time, China believes that the failure to achieve a ceasefire in Gaza is the root cause of the current round of turmoil in the Middle East. All parties should work together to promote a comprehensive and lasting ceasefire in Gaza as soon as possible. 
On Wednesday, Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan also welcomed the ceasefire agreement between Israel and the Lebanese resistance group Hezbollah. Israel is We expect all parties, especially Israel, to fulfill their responsibilities to the letter toward maintaining peace on the ground. I say that, as Turkey, we are ready to contribute any efforts to stopping the massacre in Gaza and establishing a permanent ceasefire. Despite the ceasefire in Lebanon, the Israeli army continued to intensify its attacks against Palestinians throughout the Gaza Strip. During overnight raids, the occupation army again shelled schools providing shelter for hundreds of displaced families. That included a deadly attack on the Al-Tabin school in the city of Gaza, killing eight people and injuring several others. In addition, Israeli troops attacked early Wednesday morning a shelter school in Beit Laden. 249 people and wounded more than 104,000 since October 2023. The Namibian government urged over 1.4 million citizens to cast their votes in presidential election on Wednesday. Electoral authorities have set up 2,521 polling stations in 121 domestic districts. There, citizens can go to the polls from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. local time to elect the next president as well as the 96 lawmakers out of the 104 members of parliament, as the axis of the state will decide on the remaining eight legislators. It is noteworthy to remark that the South West Africa People Organization, known as the Swapo Party, has ruled the nation since its independence from South Africa in 1990. And now we have a short break coming up, but first remember you can join us on TikTok at Telesur English, where you'll find news in different formats, news updates and more. We'll be right back, stay with us. Welcome back to From the South. Russian President Vladimir Putin arrived in the Kazakh capital of Astana as part of an official visit to assess and strengthen bilateral relations. The Russian leader was received by his Kazakh counterpart, Kasim Jomad Tokajev. The two heads of state went to the Akorda presidential palace, where they discussed topics of common interest. During the meeting, Tokajev said that Kazakhstan remains a reliable a strategic partner of Russia and called Putin's visit an important event. The presidents are expected to sign about 20 documents on the most important areas of bilateral cooperation and take part in the Collective Security Treaty Organization Summit. I want to thank you for the attention you constantly pay to the development of Russian-Kazakh relations. We feel it. We feel the attention of the President of Kazakhstan to this work that is most important for us. We consider Kazakhstan as our loyal friend, reliable and closest ally. In Albania, several arrests and two policemen were reported injured during an anti-government demonstration led by the conservative opposition. Opposition supporters blocked traffic on the main thoroughfares of Tirana, the country's capital, accusing Prime Minister Edi Rama's Socialist Party of corruption, of manipulating previous elections and of usurping the power of the judicial system. Several lawmakers of the Democratic Party, members of the European People's Party, clashed with security forces. In this in this context, the police repressed the crowd with water, canyons and tear gas.
In France, the French Farmers Unions continue its second week of protest against the free trade agreement between the European Union and Mercosur. In the city of Montauban, dozens of tractors were parked overnight outside the headquarters of the French body that brings together agricultural associations and players in the agricultural world. They gathered for an evening demonstration as actions across France intensified against the free trade agreement between the European Union and the South American Mercosur. Block. France is strongly opposed to the Europe Union signing the agreement, saying French farmers would face unfair competition that would undermine their livelihoods. In this context, the French National Assembly categorically rejected in a non-binding vote the European Union Mercosur Free Trade Agreement. After a debate which, with harsh criticism, 470 deputies denounced the agreement and only 70 supported it. The decision of the lower house of the French Parliament reinforced the position of President Emmanuel Macron, who ratified his position to the Free Trade Initiative under heavy pressure from farmers. However, it seemed unlikely Paris would succeed in slowing down an agreement that the president of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, estimated to be already in its final stage. Venezuela hosts the international anti-fascist meeting for a new world. The two-day event is held on November 27th and 28th at the Bolivar Park Convention Center in Miranda State. The meeting will be attended by delegates from different countries who will discuss strategies to give answers and assign tasks to prevent fascism from imposing itself in the sovereign peoples of the world. The meeting will also consolidate the ideas that emerged during the anti-fascist youth congress that took place on November November 22nd and 23rd in the capital city of Caracas. These events consolidate Venezuela as the capital of the struggle against fascism and as a space to unify people's voices that were and are victims of fascism. The Bolivian company Yacimientos de Litio Boliviano and the Chinese company Hong Kong CBC Investment Limited signed an agreement on Monday for the production of lithium carbonate in the southwest of the country. Two lithium carbonate plants will be built for which an initial Chinese investment of over one point. $0.03 billion has been signed. The Bolivian company's executive president, Omar Alarcón, pointed out that China is a world leader in renewable energies and a producer of lithium batteries. Meanwhile, President Luis Arce celebrated that the nation is negotiating with the largest and most important lithium production companies in the world. In Peru, the government declared a two-year emergency in the National Penitentiary Institute and the National Penitentiary System. The executive reported the state of emergency of the institutions in order to address the crisis affecting the country's prisons. The emergency declaration responds to the alarming situation of overcrowding, with authorities reporting figures of 136 percent. According to the Supreme Decree, the Ministry of Justice must approve within 45 days a sectorial strategy of penitentiary emergency to optimize the resocialization of the inmates and guarantee the implementation of the national penitentiary policy until 2030. We have a second tour break coming up, but before we invite you to visit our YouTube channel at Telesur English, there you'll be able to rewatch our interviews, top stories, special broadcastings and more. Hit the subscribe button and activate the notification bell to stay up to date on the world's most recent events. Final tour break, don't go away. Welcome back to From the South. Let's go to the Caribbean, namely the Dominican Republic, where a Pandora's box has been opened by the thief of ammunition within the domestic police forces. Let's see the coverage of our correspondent Daisy Toussaint. 
In the Dominican Republic, a hearing was held in the Pandora case, which is related to a network corruption within the police, where over 900,000 ammunition projectiles had been allegedly stolen from the national police warehouses, exposing a web of internal corruption. Let's make crystal clear that on this legal process, excluding civilian Miguelina Bayo, the rest of defendants betrayed their uniform, betrayed their institution and betrayed their country, fortunately, some of them have held their accountability in court, as they have decided to collaborate with the public prosecutor's office, particularly, three defendants have so far collaborated with the public prosecutor's office. In the Pandora case, 10 people have been charged, 9 of them police officers and a civilian, the public prosecutor's office and folly that this criminal network used to steal ammunition, right afterwards, they allocated that ammunition to 80 through border markets. The detained police officers were responsible for the custody of arms and ammunition, so they managed the arms depot, so they altered all this to cover up the projectile's theft. Thus, in one year, they have embezzled over 64 million pesos, equal to over $1 million from the state. Today, we exposed our arguments abided by law, proving the untruth of what was stated by the public prosecutor's office. We are taking a recess now. To continue with the hearing tomorrow at 2 p.m., we are convinced that the Chief Justice will be sovereign, independent, so that the authority's ruling will be grounded in the principles and legal precepts. The case was described as complex, but the Chief Justice issued a verdict. Seven of the ten defenders were remanded in custody, while the other three offenders received economic guarantees, in addition to reporting daily to the supervisor. Meanwhile, Miguelina Bello, the civilian involved, was giving house arrest. You must understand that the public prosecutor's office is charging the majority of defendants with association of wrongdoers which is globally known as criminal association, the entity accuses them of arms trafficking and a array of other allegations due to some weapons of the national police have gone missing. The Pandora case brought to light both the vulnerability of the country's security entities and the urgent need for reforms within the national police. Notwithstanding, defense attorneys will always seek to find their clients not guilty. The inspectorate issued a piece of evidence that determines that our defendant is discharged from any kind of responsibility, grounded in he didn't have the key to the warehouse, where the ammunition was kept. In addition, several defendants, namely three of them, excluding Miguelina, they will make agreements with the public prosecutor's office, so they will hold their criminal responsibility. But our client won't make any agreement because our defendant has no responsibility. Thus he won't. Admit a crime he did not commit. Dominican people have spoilighted this trial for both the magnitude of the theft and the fragility of the institutions in charge of public security. Para Telesur de Institución República Dominicana. Mexican citizens express their concern about Donald Trump's announcement to apply tariffs on all Mexican goods due to smuggling and illegal migration. On Monday, Trump announced that he would apply a 25% tariff to all imports from Mexico and Canada as one of his first measures after taking office as President of the United States in January. In this context, citizens of Tijuana, which shares a border with the United States, fear that the measure will affect their daily economy, which is close closely linked to the neighboring country. Mexican President Claudia Sheinbaum affirmed that the tariffs will not stop drug smuggling or undocumented migration to the United States. We know that the Mexicans are the ones who go and do the work, the ones who bring the labor, because they are the ones who give 100 percent to the work. If they, the U.S., throw all those people out, who is going to do those jobs? Not just that, but the farmers themselves are not going to let it happen. And we have come to the end of this news brief, but you can find these and many other stories on our website at telesiringlish.net and join us on social media. We are on Facebook, X, Instagram, Telegram and TikTok as well. For Telesiringlish, I'm Alejandra Garcia. Thank you for watching.